Here's the situation. I've decided to purchase the luxury car from you. Tiffany, an ordinary individual, doesn't need it. My parents have been thinking about getting a new car, and since marrying Peter, I've noticed a change in him. He seems more self-centered. He's been coveting the upscale car that my parents gifted to me, and frankly, I'm fed up with it. My name is Tiffany, I'm 28 years old, and I met Peter during our college days. We've been married for three years. Peter is sociable and well-liked, which is quite the opposite of me, as I am introverted and have few friends. Our conversations increased over college courses, and eventually we began to study together. Peter's interest in me was unexpected, but he took me by surprise when he asked me out. I was overjoyed and immediately said yes, marking the beginning of our relationship. What drew me to Peter was his charm, friendliness, and dedication to his studies. However, for him, the situation could have been different since he had numerous attractive and stylish female friends, and finding another girlfriend would not have been difficult for him. Once, I courageously asked him if he truly thought I was the right one for him. He seemed taken aback and questioned why I would ask such a thing. I confessed my lack of confidence and sought to understand why he chose me. After a pause, he replied that he was comfortable being with me. His answer left me unsatisfied, but before I could express more, he appeared irritated and distracted himself with his phone. Not wanting to escalate to an argument, I dropped the topic, agreeing with him and apologizing for bringing it up, though I still harbored doubts. As time moved on, our relationship continued to flow smoothly. We completed college, got married, and settled into a condo. I secured a job at a standard company while Peter pursued further education and research. When I informed my mom about our engagement, she was thrilled, though she admitted they were beginning to worry about when I'd introduce a boyfriend. Although I felt guilty for not mentioning Peter sooner, my mom understood, acknowledging my independent nature. Knowing Peter was there for me gave her peace of mind. My parents, who met in college and still deeply love each other, serve as my role models. My dad diligently worked his way up at a large company while my mom supported him and also followed her culinary passions, becoming quite skilled at it. My parents have always respected each other's boundaries and supported each other's passions, like my mom who now teaches cooking classes. Growing up in such an environment, I learned the value of independence early on. Although I was only really skilled at studying, I chose not to pursue graduate school because I wanted to be self-reliant and start my own life. Despite coming from a well-off family, I was determined not to lean on them indefinitely. I aspired to build a family like the one I grew up in and make my parents proud possibly by having children someday. This might seem like a straightforward goal, but for someone like me, it's a significant ambition. Once Peter and I started living together, things began to change. Peter was a graduate student and worked part-time, but he didn't contribute much financially. I tried to address this delicately, suggesting that it would be helpful if he could use more of his part-time earnings to help with our expenses. His response was dismissive. I do contribute, you know. Didn't you say you'd handle the living expenses when we moved in together, Tiffany? His words left me feeling uneasy. Peter had always dreamed of becoming a professor, which is why he pursued graduate school. I had reassured him not to worry about finances, given my stable job. Yet, when he retorted, I could only murmur in agreement unsure of what else to say. Peter sighed heavily. You wouldn't understand. Being a graduate student is expensive, but what about socializing and stuff? Oh, and by the way, I need $1,000 for a research trip. Can you lend it to me? I'll pay you back later. Requests like these became more frequent and our problems intensified. He began spending more nights away, leaving me alone with cold meals and unanswered calls. When he did return home in good spirits, I was too forgiving. Sometimes, out of the blue, he would suggest, Hey Tiffany, remember you wanted to go somewhere? I have tomorrow off. Let's go. 
He would also compliment my cooking, making me feel valued. Every time he showed kindness, I saw the happy marriage I desired, which made me hesitate to confront the issues. However, deep down, I knew this wasn't normal. I felt increasingly lonely and anxious, trapped in a cycle of fleeting happiness and prolonged solitude. I found myself unable to share my marital struggles with anyone. I didn't want to distress my parents, who were genuinely happy about our marriage. However, they likely sensed that something was amiss. It had been a while since I had visited them, and when I finally did, my dad suggested I stay for dinner. My mom prepared a lavish meal to welcome me back. During the meal, my dad brought up that my Aunt Lori had recently visited and expressed a desire to see me. He described her as always being spontaneous, a trait that defined her lively, ambitious, and independent nature. I'll reach out to her soon, thanks, Dad. I replied, appreciating their subtle way of reconnecting me with family support. Dad reminisced about how much Aunt Lori cared for me and how she playfully lamented that Peter had stolen me, even though she had never intended to marry. Before I met Peter, Lori was more of a confidant than an aunt. I could discuss things with her that I couldn't with my parents. She understood me profoundly and was always there to support me. Initially, I had been too timid to discuss my relationship with Peter with her, but now I was eager to reconnect. A few days after I visited with my parents, I met Lori at a cafe. She was as stylish as ever. Observing my outfit, she gently advised, You know, Tiffany, marriage is just the beginning of a lifelong journey for a woman. You should always feel confident and attractive no matter what. Your clothes can make a big difference so don't forget to take care of yourself. Then, with grace, she took a sip of her tea. Realizing how much I had neglected my interests, I apologized for not keeping in touch. Lori chuckled and replied, That's typical of you, Tiffany. It's good to be honest and serious, but being too timid usually stems from a lack of experience. But I was thrilled when I heard you found someone special. I thought, Finally, Tiffany is taking a step forward. It had been ages since I spent time with someone on a day off, and the weather was perfect, making it a much-needed and refreshing outing. We settled on the terrace, soaking up the warm sunlight, and in that tranquil moment, I felt comfortable enough to share my concerns with Lori. Initially, I had believed that even someone as reserved as me could make a relationship work with Peter. But doubts had begun to cloud my thoughts. Lori listened attentively to my entire story, nodding empathetically without interruption. When I finished, she gently inquired, I suppose you haven't mentioned this to your parents, have you, Tiffany? No, I even hesitated to tell you today, I confessed. I didn't want to acknowledge my vulnerabilities to anyone. I thought I should be capable of managing this on my own to be truly independent. I know if mom and dad found out, they'd probably want me back home immediately. So, I want to try to handle this as much as I can by myself. Lori respected my wish to handle things independently and didn't press the issue further. However, she assured me, if you ever really need help, let me know first. If my dear Tiffany asks for help, I'll be there for you no matter where I am. A month later, my mom called me casually. When you have time, could you come over? It's not urgent. Since I had the next day off, I decided to visit my parents. As I approached, I noticed a new car parked in the driveway, which sparked my excitement. Dad, is this car new? Did you just get it? Can I take it for a spin? I joked, my excitement palpable about the fancy car. Don't worry about that. This car is for you, Tiffany. Use it however you like. It'll come in handy, Mom whispered to me. We saw this car in a TV commercial and you said you liked it, Dad recalled, smiling warmly. So, it's our gift to you. You've been going through a tough time lately, so we wanted to cheer you up. If things get tough, just drive this and come home anytime. The car my dad gifted me was an SUV from a renowned international brand. 
a thoughtful gesture that brought a sense of freedom and support. Dad had even arranged a parking spot near my condo for the new SUV. I laughed in disbelief, barely able to grasp the kindness of the gesture. Later, as I drove downtown, I reached into my pocket, found the car key, and pressed the button. The lights of the SUV flashed brightly around me. It was then that I heard a familiar voice from behind. What's with the car? I turned to see Peter, my husband, who hadn't been home for quite some time. It felt like we were living separate lives. His presence left me momentarily speechless as he looked at the car with a smug grin. Ah, I see. A gift from your parents, right? Every time I face Peter, I struggled to find my voice, but I was tired of feeling diminished. Peter, don't you care anymore? Do you even care about me? I managed to say, gathering my courage. Then Peter dropped a bombshell. Are you just realizing now? Did you think I loved you all this time? It's ridiculous how hopeful you are. His mocking laughter echoed in my ears. Something inside me snapped and I retorted louder than usual. Then why did you marry me? He coldly replied, Wow, you're going to be that cold about it? I couldn't believe the words coming out of his mouth. So marrying me was just a meal ticket for you, huh? And now you want the car too because it's wasted on me? That's just great. Peter seemed unfazed by how hurtful his words were, and with a chilling indifference, he added, You know we're getting divorced. Without me, you'll never find another man. Think about it. With those harsh words, he left without a second glance, leaving me feeling both angry and heartbroken. My head pounded with a headache as I sat in the driver's seat trying to calm myself. Eventually, I called my Aunt Lori for advice. After a few days of consideration, I agreed to the divorce and moved back in with my parents. They welcomed me with open arms, and life began to feel peaceful again. However, that peace was short-lived. One afternoon, Peter showed up at my parents' house accompanied by his parents. They all sat down in the living room, and Peter's father spoke up in a stern tone, We're here to talk about our son's divorce. When the discussions about the divorce began, Tiffany issued a stern warning to Peter. If you don't agree to the divorce, I'll use my parents' connections at the university to jeopardize your future. It wouldn't be difficult to harm the career of a junior registrar if their daughter files a complaint. Peter truly loved Tiffany, but he felt her approach was overly aggressive, and it seemed she was trying to intimidate him. We could easily contest the divorce, Peter's father argued, feeling betrayed by Tiffany. Beneath her simple appearance, she's manipulative and greedy. Poor Peter. I heard she paid him to keep his distance. She must have entertained other men. We should take this to family court and assert that Peter was coerced by his wife. However, if there's a genuine apology, things might be different. For instance, if Tiffany gives up the car she's been driving, it might help smooth things over. Peter and his parents listened in silence, absorbing his father's protests. Suddenly the doorbell rang, and my mom answered it. Aunt Lori appeared behind her as she returned to the living room. Sorry, I'm late. How's the discussion going? Peter's family had met Lori once at my wedding. What are you doing here? It's rude to barge in like this. We're busy right now. Outsiders should leave, objected Peter's mother. No, don't be like that, Lori replied, unfazed. You've heard about Peter's divorce, right? How would an outsider like you know about that? Lori continued, I was informed by my brother earlier. I couldn't miss such an important moment for my dear niece. You're probably here to stop the divorce or for money, someone accused. Can you still say that after seeing this? Lori retorted as she pulled out a stack of documents from her bag, laying them out on the table for everyone to see. I hired a detective to look into this. It turns out Peter has been cheating on Tiffany with multiple women. Despite being married, he hardly came home because of it. He took advantage of Tiffany's kindness and even asked her for money. The revelation silenced the room, turning the tone of the meeting on its head as everyone processed the gravity of Lori's findings. 
I was immersed in my university research, so when I did manage to come home, we shared meals and went on trips together. We seem just like any other married couple, right? Tiffany, say something, Peter implored, his voice laced with desperation. Peter, you don't need to defend yourself. We'll handle this. It's not your fault, his father reassured him quickly. That's right. These documents from who knows where are surely fabricated. Our Peter would never engage in such acts. He's a kind and outstanding son, his mother protested vehemently. You might be kind to your parents, but it seems that your kindness doesn't extend beyond that. Like father, like son, indeed, Aunt Lori interjected sharply. Then she pulled out a photograph from the documents. I was at a hotel for a business meeting recently and saw William there. He was with another woman, looking very cozy. So, I had the detective look into William as well. The results were just as I suspected. Do you understand now? Peter's mother's face turned pale as she grabbed the documents and examined them closely. What is this, William? How long has this been going on? It's all lies, isn't it? She demanded, her voice trembling. Kayla, stop looking. Give me that. William, looking panicked, tried to snatch the documents, but it was too late. Kayla, visibly distraught, confronted William directly. You've been cheating on me. The car you wanted so badly was for her in these photos, wasn't it? No matter how hard William tried to calm her down, Kayla wouldn't listen. The conversation about Peter's divorce was momentarily forgotten as Kayla stormed out of the house, tears streaming down her face, with William trailing behind her in a futile attempt to explain. Left in the ensuing chaos, Peter blurted out, Hey, wait, what about me? And followed them out, equally confused. The rest of us were left in stunned silence, but Aunt Lori had a satisfied look on her face, giving me a knowing wink. It was clear she had anticipated the dramatic unraveling of events, revealing truths that were perhaps long hidden but necessary to confront. After the tumultuous events, Aunt Lori shared with me that Peter's parents had eventually divorced. You won't fall for such a terrible man again. Let's make you more attractive. I'll teach you everything about grooming yourself as a woman, Lori encouraged. Despite her busy schedule, she frequently visited and took me out for meals and shopping trips. During this time, I absorbed a great deal from her and gained a new perspective on self-care and confidence. A year after the divorce, I made a pivotal decision to attend graduate school. I dedicated myself to my studies and personal development, which was a transformative period for me. Time flew by, and one day, while at a street intersection, I heard someone call my name. I turned around to find Peter. It's been a while. You've changed a lot, haven't you? He remarked, a hint of surprise in his tone. Initially, I hardly recognized him. In Peter's eyes, the woman he once knew as his plain ex-wife had evolved into someone stunningly beautiful and confident. Meanwhile, Peter's life had taken a downturn following his parents' public divorce scandal. He had dropped out of graduate school as his parents, William and Kayla, had cut off their financial support due to the chaos he had instigated. Struggling to pay for his tuition and living expenses, the carefree life he once enjoyed was a distant memory. The women who had once been interested in him had drifted away, and his former glory had dissipated almost overnight. Now he stood before his ex-wife, who appeared utterly transformed. Just as Peter was about to suggest catching up, a man approached us. Sorry for the wait. Are you a friend of Tiffany's? He asked. It was Kevin, the man I had recently started seeing. His arrival was perfectly timed, underscoring the new chapter of my life that Peter was no longer a part of. While I was out with Kevin, a group of women nearby couldn't help but notice him. Wow, that guy is handsome, isn't he? He's so tall, could he be a model? They commented, admiring Kevin's striking appearance. Kevin, noticing my brief interaction with someone from my past, subtly acknowledged Peter with a nod. He's someone from my past, but it's okay, we're finished talking. Let's go, shall we? Kevin said, taking my hand. 
Peter stood there, stunned, as Kevin confidently led me away by the hand. Without giving Peter another thought, Kevin and I walked towards the crosswalk. I kept my gaze straight ahead, focused on the path in front of us and the future that awaited, not looking back even once as we left.